Here's a live look at the Addison Airport where the NTSB is on the ground investigating Sunday's plane crash. Ten people were killed. You can see that gaping hole there still in the roof of the hangar. Thanks for being with us tonight. I'm Chris Lawrence. Izzy's off tonight. We are learning more about the people who died in that plane crash and their connection to our community. Brian and Ornella Ellard were two of the eight passengers on board. They died along with their two high school age children, and we're going to have a lot more on that family in just a few minutes. Within the past hour, the NTSB has released some new details. Investigators have recovered the cockpit voice recorder and is in the process. That's in the process of being downloaded right now. There are multiple security cameras that captured this crash. Those are also going to be reviewed and investigators are examining whether weight may have been a factor. Here's what they had to say about that recording device. We don't know exactly what's on the recorder, but what the recorders do, the CVRs we refer to them, uh, will capture external communications uh, on the aircraft between the crew and air traffic control. And of particular interest to us is the internal co uh, cockpit conversation between the pilot and the co-pilot. All right, our David Goins has been uh, working this story since it started. Uh, what can you tell us? Yeah, Chris, listening to that NTSB presser, a very important point was made just then. They want to get a sense of what was going on between the two pilots during this very short flight. What we've heard so far is that external communication between the pilots and air traffic control seemed completely normal. They acknowledged takeoff, nothing unusual uh, leading up to when that flight took off. Now, as NTSB works through the various steps to try to figure out what led up to this crash, we talked to uh, someone with a pretty unique perspective who can walk us through exactly what they're looking at. Even with aircraft taking off again, the focus Monday at Addison Airport returned to finding out why this flight did not make it out of takeoff. Eyewitnesses on Sunday reported seeing this Beechcraft King Air 350 make a sharp left turn right after takeoff before slicing through this hangar. They're going to be looking at this tube. This is an air tube. Lad Sanger is a pilot and aviation attorney who walked us through the various systems NTSB investigators will be paying close attention to, including power levels to control engines on a Beechcraft King Air. Was the engine producing power or not? What was the weight in the fuel in the left wing? What was the weight of any baggage that was stored in the left wing? We know this aircraft is new, just two years old, and was headed to St. Petersburg, Florida on Sunday when it crashed. The website FlightAware shows numerous trips between Addison and Colorado recently. That same site shows the plane on its way to Vail last Monday, turned around over Oklahoma airspace, and returned back to Addison. NTSB investigators will examine the complete history of the aircraft. So investigators are going to be paying close attention to those automatic systems to ensure that they functioned correctly. Sanger says while it is too early to determine a cause, at least two other King Airs, one in Kansas and another in Australia, have crashed shortly after takeoff in the last five years. Sanger is currently involved in litigation from that Kansas crash. We've had too many King Airs that have departed controlled flight immediately after liftoff. Now NTSB investigators will spend likely months, even years, to find out what happened in the few seconds this flight was in the air. Wichita-based Textron Aviation, which owns the King Air and uh, owns the Beechcraft uh, models, says that they are actually participating in this investigation with the NTSB, so they're not in a position to say anything more at this uh, early stage. Chris, one thing they're also uh, looking at is the experience of these pilots, namely how much flight time they may have had together, going back to that communication issue uh, going forward. All Chris, right, a lot of angles to consider. Uh, we mentioned that family of four, all of whom were killed in the crash. We've been working to find out more about them. Alex Rozier is at John Paul II High School in Plano. Uh, what's their connection to JP2? Well, Chris, in that family of four, there were two kids, Alice and Dylan Maritato. And Alice actually went to school here at John Paul II High School in Plano. Dylan was set to, but this was really an incredibly successful family. They were with their mom and stepdad on board that plane. Two of them well known in the DFW area, Brian Ellard and his wife Ornella. Both of them were artists, but Brian made a living for many years as the president and CEO of NTA Life Insurance. That is in Dallas. His dad actually started the business, but Brian took over recently selling it for hundreds of millions of dollars. More recently, he worked as a sculptor and painter. Ornella was an architect and a designer. 
together. They were in the restaurant business as well. They owned Mille Lire. That's in a new Italian restaurant in Dallas. And the GM sent us a statement today saying the restaurant quote was built around the tradition of our family. And as you can imagine, this sudden loss has affected us all. The doors are still open and we are thankful for the support of our community. We continue to ask for everyone's thoughts and prayers for everyone involved. But this week was supposed to be a family trip. They were headed to this property we got video of in St. Petersburg, Florida today. Our sister station talked to some neighbors that knew the Ellard family saying that they were active in the St. Pete community, often giving to charities like Wounded Warriors. So that family, uh, four of the 10 people on board this crash that uh, killed 10. Now, uh, we did just receive word just a few minutes ago from the medical examiner confirming the names of a few other people on board. In addition to this family, we now know that 58 year old Stephen Thielen and 27 year old Matt Palmer were among the people who died in Sunday's crash. Reporting live in Plano, I'm Alex Rosier. All right, here is another live look at the Addison Airport. We're still waiting to learn when the crews will be able to move the plane out of that hangar. Of course, we're going to stay on top of this story and bring you any updates as soon as we learn of them right here on WFAA and of course at WFAA.com.